Moving on to an exclusive conversation then, Jane Fraser, the CEO of City Group, says India is in a bright spot and this is India's moment in the global world order. Speaking at the opening of the City Investor Conference of 2024, she also talks about how India stands to benefit from the supply chain shift and uh, from China and the favourable factors making global investors look at India. Listen in to what she had to say. We're certainly seeing plenty of evidence of a general global slowdown this year compared to last year. But remember, last year surprised us all with the resiliency um, with which many of the, the different economies around the world performed. So it is rather different in different places in the world. I think in the U.S., um, we saw a lot of benefits last year of the supply constraints getting released. Um, a very resilient economy, um, corporates and uh, the consumer in good health. Um, this year, I expect to see growth, um, the growth there slow down, but I would not mistake the fact that the American entrepreneur is on the front foot, a bit akin to India, um, and uh, you know, looking, looking at investing and looking at the path forward. When you look at Europe, you see a different story. I, uh, you've got more stagnating economies there, and you've got some real competitiveness challenges. Um, I, I think both labor costs are high, energy costs are almost double the cost of the rest of the world. And so we're seeing quite a lot of activity get reallocated from Europe, to which obviously Asia is a beneficiary from the cost advantages, but so is the US. Um, out in uh, China, um, really a, a challenge of uh, a demand challenge at the moment. Um, I do think that uh, in the longer run, so many of the Chinese industries are very, very advanced uh, technologically, and that strength will, will bear out. But over the next couple of years, um, there is a demand, there's a demand problem and a couple of sectors, property and others, challenged. Japan, good story there. Um, while the growth has slowed, really you've got, uh, you've got a new Japan emerging again, a much more vibrant Japan. And the big question for everyone is, will, will the mindset in Japan revert back to a disinflationary one, or will it remain uh, where it is today? And I think that, that really is the big question. Um, but I leave the best till last, which is India. Uh, India should be on the front foot. This is India's moment. Um, it's not just the demographic dividend. It's not just the digital dividend. It's green opportunity. Um, it's an incredible talent base that is here um, and an opportunity uh, that I think uh, the world is playing in um, to India's favor right now. And uh, it's yours for the taking. You talked about China and then, of course, India. Yeah. In your conversation with global CEOs, Jane, how do you see them looking at the China diversification play, the supply chain play? How does India fit in into that narrative? Look, if you, if you take a big step back for the CEOs of the world today, and frankly, I'd say countries as well, we, we're going to face a decade of building resilience. And that resiliency can come from the fiscal side, it can be defense, uh, cyber, it can be around green and energy policy. It certainly is around supply chain and operational financial. So for the CEO, you've got to transform, um, but you've also got to build resiliency at the same time. And it's not an easy equation to do that whilst being efficient. Uh, India is a very important part of that equation. So if we take supply chains, we are seeing clients build up inventories um, because the just-in-time has to move into the just-in-case mindset. So an obvious way to do that is to build up inventories and make sure that you've got um, <coughs> an ability to protect yourself. But that's not strategic. So the China Plus is turned into a nearshoring, a friendshoring, um, and uh, a, a diversification. In certain sectors, it is um, both China and the US um, are decoupling. But in most instances, what we see is healthier than that because decoupling is never great. Um, and it's a diversification. India is the obvious choice. It is very difficult to replace the scale, um, the cost, and the, um, the quality of India um, and, and China. Um, and Mexico, Japan, they're the only countries really in the world that can do this. Um, and India is probably the best place of all 
to become that, uh, the addition to China in new supply chain um, around the world. If we move towards India now. Yes. And we talked about India being the flavor of the day. What do you see mm. as the unique differentiators for India? What promising new trends? And I would say most importantly, what should we watch out for? Are there any banana skins out there? Mm. I think you do the country a disservice. Um, I am more optimistic. It's not just the flavor of the day. Uh, I think many of the trends we've just talked about play out to India's um, favor, and it is yours to capture. And I think to demonstrate that, um, that you can continue to do this with growing agility, um, that it becomes easier doing business uh, in India, both for Indians and for uh, the foreign investors coming in here. And the digital uh, speed with which digitization has taken off in India certainly gives one a lot of hope. Uh, secondly, the green agenda uh, is another one, in being a green supply chain. Without overdoing that, because uh, climate change is hard, which we'll talk about, um, it's a lot of challenges with it. But that, again, is another area that we can see India advancing infrastructure is advancing here to make this all, this all much easier. Then you've got scale. Uh, there aren't many countries which have the scale of India. And so when you're looking around, where is it you want to invest as a foreign investor, this has big, big advantages here. Um, that the, uh, whilst uh, it's got some, ch it's in a challenging neighborhood, um, that, you know, India has got the ability to connect into the Middle East where we're seeing tremendous financial flow vitality um, and dynamism and also a fascinating societal changes that are happening there. That will be another beneficiary of a of new and important partnership for India, as well as old friends um, and the friends of the West. Get into a break on that note. We'll come back and discuss uh, market fundamentals, more on the markets. Pawan Parak joins in on the other side. 